In our previous video, I talked about the one eyeshadow that you need to know how to apply to make everything else so much easier. Now we're gonna add in one more eyeshadow into the mix. This time we're gonna turn it into a smoky eye. Smoky eyes are so versatile. This is a very basic smoky eye. We're just using two eyeshadows to create this look. So we have our first eyeshadow. This eyeshadow is a mixture between your blush, bronzer, contour, even your favorite shade of nude lipstick. It's all of those things in one. So just make sure you're adjusting this to work for you. What the first eyeshadow is doing is creating the shape and the structure. I also like to make sure that this is matte or satin finished. For our second eyeshadow, we want to pick a depth that we are willing to go. I want this to be a medium smoky eye, so I have an eyeshadow much darker than my skin tone, but you can adjust this to work for you. I also want you to start off by using a matte shadow if you are a beginner, because if you can make matte work for a smoky eye, you can do every smoky eye. But before we get into all of that, we first of all want to prep the lids. I have very dry lids, so I like to use a very sheer layer of primer, or sometimes I'll just use a matte concealer. But I do want to show the difference between using a primer versus just concealer as a base. Now, the difference in appearance isn't that obvious, but you do have a little bit more pigment on the primed side. But here is the test. I'm going to rub this with a dry cotton pad. This kind of represents the wear over a long period of time. Not that you're going to be rubbing your eyes, but as you can see, the one without primer disappears compared to the one where we use eyelid primer. And holding onto pigment is very important for a smoky eye. Firstly, less fallout because we have something that the shadow can hold onto, and it will also keep the depth for us with less chance of it fading throughout the day. Now that we have a good base, let's talk about parts of the eyes. We are going to be focusing on two areas. The lid, this can be visible or not with the eyes open, and then the other area is the crease. Now this is actually the crease line. The crease itself is more like this, blended all the way up, fading into nothingness as it reaches the eyebrows. And we're actually going to be starting with our crease shadow. This should be lighter of the two shadows. Sometimes people over apply their darker shadow thinking that that is what makes a smoky eye but really this shadow needs to be higher than your darker one. Now, before we apply, let's recap on how we hold a brush. I feel the most comfortable holding the brush in the middle of the handle. I also hold it like a pen, but a little bit more stretched out with my pinky and my ring finger kicked out for balance. My index finger is sitting on top and the brush is pinched between my middle and my thumb. I want you to try keeping your eyes open, but looking down in a mirror. This will allow you to see the shape that you're creating while also giving you access to the lid space. You want to watch for the height of the hand as well. I like to keep it at about nose level height, slightly tilted upwards. Now we're ready to apply. We're going to sweep this into the crease line, blending over and back. And by keeping your eyes open, you're able to see the shape that you're creating. Think of this like contouring your face or shaping your cheeks with blush. You want to follow the natural curve and shape of the eyes. You can sweep this over and back, which is what we used to call the windscreen wiper motion. However, some people find this can go a little bit muddy or for mature lids, your lid can kind of move as you swipe. So what I would recommend doing is little circular motions, little swirls, working counterclockwise and clockwise, working in towards the nose in one direction, and then swirling in the opposite direction, working your way out. We can apply a little bit more of this shadow if we need to after we apply our second one, but you should end up with something that looks like this. Fading upwards towards the brows, leaving a blank space underneath the arch. And this is a transition application or a mid-tone application, basically contouring, shaping, and framing the eyes. If you want to, you can also apply this all over the lid. However, bear in mind that you will be creating a layer between the primer and the deeper eyeshadow. So maybe try out both ways to see what works for you. Now we can add the second shadow. This shadow should be applied with a flat brush. As we talked about in our previous video, a flat brush is great for pressing the eyeshadow onto the lid. You can press in a horizontal or vertical shape. I like to bring my hand off to the side just so I'm still able to look in a mirror and see what I'm doing. Now I'm still holding the brush like a pen, but just a little bit higher up on the brush so that we have more control and we can apply a little bit more pressure because we want to be pressing this over the lid area. Especially because we are using a matte shadow, I do find you have to use this press and lift motion. Every time you pick up a little bit more eyeshadow, I want you to tap off any excess and then just start to build and blend these layers up as you go. Now this is quite different from how we applied the shimmer. Remember with the shimmer, we did this swiping and gliding motion 
foundation working across the lid. That's because we wanted that shimmer and that glitter to rest on the lid and allow it to shine. And that's also because shimmers tend to have a little bit more moisture in them compared to matte eyeshadows, which are more on the dry side. So when you're using a matte eyeshadow, you do want to use this pressing motion to really get that pigment on there. So I like to do a press and then a very gently pull the edges and swipe it and press it down onto the lid. Now it's up to you what you want to do with the outer edge. I like to bring it down and under around my eyes to create a round shape, leaving this area blank so that we create that roundness. But if you want to, you can also elongate your eyes. So you can pull this up at an angle using the lower lash line as a guide. It's totally up to you which shape you want to create. Do you want the more rounded or lifted? You pick your angle. Once we cover the lid with the dark eyeshadow, we then want to blur the two shadows together to remove any harsh lines. Now this can be done with a clean brush or you can pick up a little tiny bit of that first shadow and sweep this where the lid and the crease meet. No need to overdo this. Use whatever's left over in the brush until it goes clean and then just keep blending. Only add if you feel like you need to. We still want some difference, so don't over blend the two shadows together. The lid should always be a little bit darker and then blending upwards into the crease. I also like to sweep this underneath the eyes just with whatever's left over on the brush. The brush is pretty much clean at this stage, so really I'm just blending what's already there. I then just finish with mascara and some lashes. I do find with the smoky eye, it's best to apply a little bit of mascara just to frame and bring out the eyes a little bit more. So now we have two options using the same base, but just adding one shadow. So we added our shimmer shadow in our previous video and now we've added our matte shadow, and this has the same starting point, similar technique, but two different shadows. And that's why it's so important to make sure you're applying that first shadow really well. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not too happy with how my camera quality is at the moment. I might re-record these and maybe add some more information in the videos as well. Just with my illness, it's really hard to refilm. But if you do have any questions, I will try to answer them in the video if I do end up re-recording them. But I'll try and put them up as more of a bonus video. And as always, my friends, remember to be kind to yourself. I know I say that every week, but never forget to show yourself some kindness and compassion. You know, I couldn't sleep last night and I was just tossing and turning, just bullying myself in my head. So today I'm gonna try to be kind to myself. I'm gonna make up for my sleepless night of wearing I might take a nice bubble bath. That might be the nice thing that I do today. But let me know what cheers you up when you're feeling a little bit low because for me, it's definitely bubble baths and I will see you in the next one.